Okay, guys, welcome to our eighth webinar, which will be a successful soldering overview. We're going to talk about the techniques and what it takes to do it, and then we're going to do some live here examples here on the table in front of me. Uh, as, of course, working with decoders, you're going to be doing a lot of soldering, whether it be to a speaker or to uh, components uh, such as resistors, capacitors, and, of course, to the decoders. So we want to teach you uh, some of the actual uh, methods that our, you know, our professionals here use to make soldering maybe not quite as scary. Really quickly, myself, my name is George Bogatuck. Um, I'm the product specialist here. also work with the sales and the uh, service department helping out. I've been a model railroader since I was a 14-year-old and really went in and jumped in and learned everything. And I've had a lot of great friends to help me hone my skills over the years. And so uh, one of the things I enjoy about my job is being able to go out and show people a lot of the cool things that our decoders can do and in this case, teach you guys some soldering skills. So with that, we'll move forward here. So first of all, what is soldering? Soldering is the formation of a metal to metal joint using solder. What this does is this gives you a metal chemical uh, joint to make sure that any electrical connections and so forth are reliable. It makes sure that they're connected and there's not gonna be any corrosion or anything that could potentially inhibit or damage the uh, joint. So the joint is made by an alloy formation, which is known as the solder, at the base metal and solder. So when you're soldering two wires together or when you're soldering to a circuit board, you're actually melting the, me the metal and forming a, a solid chemical bond. In soldering, there's three key elements, of course, the heat source, which is the soldering iron, the solder itself, so the chemical makeup of the metal that we're gonna melt, and then of course the flux, and they are all very important to use in uh, your soldering joints. So when we get to soldering, we're looking at the seven T's of a reliable soldering joint. The first one is temperature, and you really wanna make sure that you've got the temperature of your soldering iron adjusted or set where your work is going to be. Um, there's different temperature ranges, whether, you know, depending on the alloy that you're using. Most soldering for what we're gonna be doing is good within the six to 700 uh, degree Fahrenheit range. Lead free uh, takes a little higher temperature than leaded solder. So that's another thing to kind of keep in mind. Um, and we'll talk about tools here in a second, but you wanna make sure that you've got the proper temperature uh, the timing solder doesn't really need to be done over a long period of time. It doesn't take very long for that solder to hit that joint and melt and create the formation of the bond. So you want to make sure you've got a good timing and also not so long that you're potentially damaging other components. Training, which is part of what we're going to talk about here along with techniques. Training, practice. When you were done here, if you get some scrap uh, PCBs out of models that you've installed decoders in or other things like that, use that to test your skills and to practice because the soldering techniques and things that we're going to do really are going to be a practice. And once you get a few under your belt, that you're going to realize it's a lot easier than it sounds. You want to make sure you have the right tools. Uh, we're going to talk about that here in just a second before we get into the soldering actual techniques. The tested solderable parts, most of the time, if you're buying components such as resistors, capacitors, and things like that, they've already been designed as solderable, so you don't really have to worry about that part. And when it comes to the technologically correct design, uh, that's where our circuit boards and things like that come into play. So you don't really need to worry about that part too much. We actually take care of those for you. So. Some of the tools you'll need, soldering station is a big one. This is a, the, what's gonna apply the heat. We talked about the different temperatures that you might need. So you wanna have an adjustable temperature soldering iron. Uh, the one in the illustration there is a Weller and it's the same one we're gonna be using here today during our demonstration. But you can see it's fairly simple, but it does have a uh, adjustable temperature knob so you can go through and adjust what your temperature range is. You want a fine tip. Part of the reason is because we're working with small electronics. So you want to make sure that you can get there and focus the energy or the heat right on that joint that you're using. Also, the other advantage to a fine tip is it's fairly maneuverable, so you can get into tight uh, locations and tight fit places a little easier. Solder iron stand. Uh, this one here is kind of a strong one because you want to make sure that you've got somewhere to put your iron away. If you're just laying it on the table or something like that, there's always the opportunity for you to hit the cord and spin it around, potentially burn yourself or burn something you're working on, melt model shells and things like that. So you want to make sure that you've got somewhere to put it when you're not using it. And then this particular one here is a sponge holder uh, type stand where you can see the sponge there in the uh, bottom of it. And that's for cleaning the iron tip. 
also uh, cleaning the iron tip there is that brass uh, weave that you're seeing in the silver canister there. That's another thing that's designed to help clean the iron tip. Um, you want to make sure that it's always clean to help prevent corrosion and contamination in your joints. The next thing is you want to use a good set of wire strippers. Uh, you can see the ones there uh, in the picture. They have slots along the way where you have different gauge wires that you can put in there and strip and strip the insulation off. And we'll show you how to use those in just a minute. But either that or you want an adjustable one to make sure that you match to the wire gauge so you're not actually cutting the wire when you're trying to strip the insulation. A pair of tweezers, I use these all the time when I'm working with small electronics, especially if I'm doing uh, fine wires to uh, the decoder. It gives me a little bit of a helping hand to reach in, hold the wire in place so that I can hold the wire with the soldering iron and then apply the soldering iron to the joint so it helps hold everything in place. And the, the advantage to a fine point tweezers is because, again, you can maneuver into small places. Um, the next thing is what's called a helping hand. Some of you guys have seen some of these commercially available ones that have some clips on some adjustable metal brackets. You can even use something simple. So this one here in this photo that I'm showing here is just a simple homemade uh, one with a clothespin attached to a piece of wood. And this can hold all kinds of things, including, you know, circuit boards while you're working on them. Um, you can even use, uh, in this case, I have a a uh, small capacitor and we can put that in there and it will hold it in place while we work on the soldering of it. So something like this is really good to have handy. So if you have one that could be made for extremely cheap, just use some hot glue and a clothespin and a piece of wood and it'll hold it in place. And then a couple of other tools we'll talk about the solder wick or the braid. Um, we're going to use this one during our class presentation today, but the other one is what's called a solder sucker. I'm not a big fan of this particular one for a few different reasons, one of which is it's fairly large. So um, I have one here in front of me, and this is a fairly large tool. And what you do is you take the plunger on this thing, you press it in, and there's a rubber stopper inside of here. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to heat the joint, put this over the joint, and then press the button, and it creates a vacuum and, draw, and sucks the solder out of that joint. Well, I'm not a big fan of it because it's big and clumsy and bulky, but the other side of it is you have to get pretty close to the work, and so a lot of times you can melt the tip on this. We're not going to use this during our presentation, but I do want to show you that it is there, it is available, and this particular one is also anti-static design so that that way you're not actually discharging static electricity into your decoder. So I'm going to put that one aside for now. So we'll use a lot of these tools during the presentation today. The next one, of course, is our supplies. Um, when we talk about solder, this is probably one of the most important things. And right here, I've just got a roll of solder on a stand, and I've got a lead of it coming out. Um, there's different types of solder. There's leaded and lead-free. More and more places, including soundtracks, are going lead-free in our building. So all of our electronics are done lead-free. Um, but you can get both. Leaded, for, leaded solder, as I mentioned, doesn't take as high a temperature, so you can uh, use it fairly uh, low temperature. Um, the lead-free stuff does take a little bit higher temperature. You also want to make sure that it's fine. Uh, this particular one here I have in front of me is 20 thousandths or 0 0.020 inches, uh, but you can find them as fine as uh, 015 or 010. Um, when you're soldering, it's good to pull a little bit out of the roll already and just kind of have it setting on there uh, ready to work so that that way you're not trying to pull all that while you've got your solder materials together. Flux is a very important one. Uh, we'll talk about that in, uh, next slide here, but that's a very important one. And another supply you'll want to have on hand is heat shrink tubing. Soundtracks makes a package of different size heat shrink tubing for your connection. So be sure to check that out and use it. It'll help uh, make your joints look a lot more professional and also protect you from problems down the line. Now, when it comes to flux, uh, this is something that I really think is very important to have in soldering. It makes it so much easier. There are some companies out there that don't recommend that you use any flux at all on their decoders. And part of the reason for that is there are so many different types of flux out there for different jobs. We're using fine electronics, but there are other flux components out there that are used for, uh, say, pipe fitting for in the plumbing industry. Common in many hobby shops is one for brass model building called Tix Flux. And these have a very high acidic content, uh, including the zinc chloride listing there. 
And what happens is, is that zinc chloride gets put onto the circuit board and it starts attacking the components. And so when you're picking a flux, you want to make sure that you're selecting one that is designed for work with fine electronics. You also, if you're using lead-free solder, you want to make sure that you've got one that's designed for work with lead-free. Again, you've got higher temperatures. The one we use here at Soundtracks, uh, this it's in a syringe, and it's made by Alpha Metals, and it's a part number OM338. So if you guys want to find that, the advantage to this, it's a little higher priced, but it flows and, and dries clear on the circuit board. Um, and so it gives a more professional look. So when our uh, technicians are downstairs doing rework, they're using this type of stuff. Uh, the syringe gives you a very fine application so you can make sure that only the place you want uh, has some solder. Um, another one I found uh, that I use at home is this uh, one called Chip Quick. Uh, I found that at DigiKey and it's about 11 or $12, but it also comes in a syringe and it's a more brownish color like the, what you're seeing there in that tub of of uh, solder there. So it can leave a slight brown residue on your on your decoder and on your work. But when you're done, you usually want to make sure you clean the work off anyway. So it won't be a big issue. So what will happen, like I said, if you use the wrong type of flux, it can damage the circuit board, cause issues. Um, we had one store that was doing some installation work and he was putting the decoder in and everything would work. He'd go away to tend to his store and he would come back and his decoder would be dead. And he couldn't figure out what was going on. And when we finally figured out he was using Tix brand flux because it was a hobby shop, that's what he had, he stopped using the Tix, the problems went away. So this is a very key point. It does, and you're going to see really quickly here during our demonstrations today, how much better solder works when you have the proper flux. So you want to make sure that you use a flux. So some of the basic tips that you want to make sure that you have, uh, you want to clean the area before and after soldering. Again, you're reducing the potential contaminants or anything that can cause the joint not to make and not to wet properly. And wetting is for the solder flowing into the board or into the connection uh, evenly. So you want to make sure you clean it before and after. Uh, usually you can use a toothbrush with some rubbing alcohol. should be fine to clean the, the uh, surface and the area that you're working. Um, clean the iron tip before each use. Again, this is where the sponge comes into place or that brass weave that you can kind of see here. Um, you just basically take your soldering iron and kind of run it through and it will clean your iron tip off to make sure that you've got a nice clean tip. Again, it, it prevents contamination. When you're doing your actual soldering, you want to hold the soldering iron onto the joint for about two to five seconds. You can watch the solder and actually make sure that it wets properly, and that means it fills the joint, covers the pad or the surface area of the solder joint. Um, again, it should cover 75% of the surface area to make sure that you get a good solder joint. Now, in this case, we're going to talk about wire strippers. You want to use the proper wire strippers to cut the insulation of the wire. What we're going to do is the wire strippers will cut into the insulation of the wire but protect the metal wire inside so you get kind of a rounded and it will cut and then what you're going to do is you're going to remove the insulation with your fingers you're not going to use the tool because if you cut in and then twist and pull the insulation off what can happen is you're cutting into the wire and potentially either degrade the connection or potentially cause uh, more parts or more strands of that wire to break loose therefore reducing the strength and the reliability of that joint. So when you make your connection, you want to cut the insulation and then pull the insulation off with your finger. And then the last one here is going to be to store the iron with your solder on the tip to help prolong its life. The tip of the iron is made with a specific metal alloy that's on the end that allows you to do the soldering work. And by allowing that solder to sit on there, it helps protect the coating on the tip of the iron to make sure that you've got a good surface to make your solder joints with. So when we're doing our technique, first thing you want to do is you know what parts you're going to connect. You're going to apply flux to the joint or the work. So if we're working with a circuit board, you can put a little bit of flux on the tab of the circuit board or your, where you're wiring to. Um, get your soldering iron, clean your tip off again on either the wet sponge or the brass weave that we showed you. Apply solder the tip of the iron. And this is where a little is more. A lot of people will put, you know, I've heard the adage, the bigger the blob, the better the job. Well, that's not what we want here. We want a nice, clean, small amount of solder to make sure that we got a good joint, but we also have enough to hold it together. So usually if you're making a joint, you want to kind of take your solder. And if you measure about the length of 
the end of a tip of the, like say your pad right here, and we're gonna, just gonna bend that over. So when we're using this, we're just gonna use a small amount of that solder on that joint. And that's a good measurement to, uh, to use. Um, doesn't necessarily have to be, but again, smaller is easier. You can always add a little bit more solder if you need to, but it's a lot harder to take it away because you're basically gonna undo everything you did. Once you have that, you've got the solder, the, the solder on the iron. You take the iron, you touch the work about two to five seconds. The flux will not only clean the tab off and remove any oxidation, but it also draws the solder off of the end of the iron and into the joint. And then once you see that that joint is fully wetted, you see that the solder is flow where exactly it's supposed to be, remove the iron and your joint is gonna be made. Um, when you're done, you want a nice shiny joint and connection as opposed to a matte connection because then that way you know you've got the proper chemical matte bond that you're looking for. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna tin the wire and so to do that, what we're doing is we're, take, we're mostly working with stranded wire. And stranded wire is basically many, many small, fine pieces of metal wire inside the insulation. And so when we're using this wire to work with our decoders, we want to make sure that we're not causing any issues. For example, if we have any stray strands or anything out there, and we're also making sure that that wire is soldered correctly and also has a very solid joint to it so that all the parts of that wire are getting the power are going to be going through it. So to do this, we're going to strip about an eighth of an inch of insulation off the end of the wire with our wire strippers. We're going to make the cut. We're going to pull the insulation off the end of the wire with our fingers. Then we have a small bit of exposed wire. Now we're going to twist the ends of the wire to make sure that there aren't any stray wires or any stray strands that can cause issues. Apply flux to the stripped end and we're gonna take a small amount of solder on our iron and then touch it to the end of the wire. And again, the flux is gonna draw it off of the iron. So let's show you what we're doing here. So with that, I'm gonna take, I've got a small piece of wire here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my wire strippers and I'm gonna cut them down around 30 to 32 gauge because this is a pretty small wire. And all I'm gonna do is just simply cut the end of the insulation and then I'm just simply gonna pull it off with my finger. So now I have a small bit of exposed metal on this wire. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the end and I'm gonna kind of twist it to kind of make sure, here I'll show everybody on this angle, to make sure that I'm making a good solid connection and make sure that none of my wires are straight. Once we have a tight weave, we're gonna put a little bit of flux on the end. So I'm just simply gonna take my syringe I'm gonna put a small amount on the end of the wire there. And then I'm gonna grab my soldering iron. And again, I'm gonna clean the tip. So you're gonna hear that hit this wet sponge. I'm just simply gonna grab a little bit of solder off the end of the wire or the end of the roll of solder here. And I'm just simply gonna to touch the end. That's it. Now the end of that wire is tinned. Now, here's one of the things that a lot of people overlook is if you tin too much of the wire or too much is exposed, you can always cut it down to be a little shorter. So once you've got that exposed end, again, we want to make sure that we have properly insulated wire inside the model. So this would be a perfect bit here and you can see it's relatively small on the exposed end. Here, let's do it again. We're going to do this on the other end of the wire here. So we're just going to Again, we're just gonna cut the insulation here, make sure that the insulation is cut. We're gonna pull the end off with our fingers. And now we have the exposed wire. So now we're gonna twist it, make sure all the frayed ends are tied in. We're gonna apply a little bit of flux to the end of the wire. Get our soldering iron, we're gonna clean the tip. Grab just a little bit of solder off the end of the solder, the roll of solder, and there we go. And like I said, we can then trim the end if it's a little too long. Tinning the end of the wire is going to be an important step because it's when you're making connections, especially to a circuit board or something like that, you want to make sure that you've got that connection uh, made. So the next part is we're going to join two wires. And basically we're going to do the same thing that we just did, except we're going to solder the two wires together. So the first step is to tin the end of each wire. We're going to take two wires 
tin the ends. Then we're going to slide a piece of heat shrink tubing over the end. So we're going to cut a piece of shrink tubing off of our roll or off of our piece. We're going to slide it over the end of the wire. We're going to apply flux to the tinned ends. And then this is where our helping hand is going to come into play because then we can align the two wires in parallel and basically run the iron across there with a little bit of solder if needed and that'll help make those joints. So let's show you how quick and easy this task is. So I'm going to put my wire, the one wire here in the soldering or in the helping hand here. I'm going to slide my heat shrink tubing and again you don't want to make sure that your piece of heat shrink tubing is not too long. We're going to slide that over the joint over the wire here. So now you can see that I've got my piece of heat shrink tubing there on the end of the wire. And we have our wire. So now this is the wire we just tinned. So we're going to tin the other wire here. Um, I need to cut the insulation off of here really quickly. So we're going to cut this. We're going to pull the insulation off. Again, we're going to twist the ends, apply our flux. Clean the soldering iron. Grab a little bit of solder off the end here. And we're going to tin the end. OK, so now once I do this, to join the two wires together, I'm going to put a little bit of flux here on the end of the wire. Again, I'm going to just clean the tip off. I'm going to grab a little bit of extra solder to make sure. And then here, I'm going to show you how I use the tweezers. That'll help keep my hands out of the way. But I grab the wire here. And so therefore, I can watch carefully how I line the two up. And I'll make my solder joint. And now I have the two pieces together. That's how easy it is to join two wires together. Um, you can also, and I've done this in the past, where I'll take the two wires and this two stranded wires and kind of twist the strands together to give a physical connection as well. Um, you can do either one because again, remember the soldering joint that you're making is making a chemical and a physical bond. So you can do it however you like. So the next thing to do is now we need to insulate. So now we need to slide our heat shrink tubing over the joint and then we can use the uh, barrel of the uh, soldering iron to, do, to, to shrink the tubing. So what we're going to do now is we're just going to take the barrel of the soldering iron up here against the tubing and it's, it's going to reduce and shrink that tubing over that joint so that that way I can make sure that I do not have any exposed wires over there. Um, you don't necessarily have to use the barrel of the soldering iron if you have a heat gun or a heat source of some form. Uh, something like that will help also. But now, but you can kind of see how that joint is made. There's no exposed metal. We've got a nice, clean, small, professional looking joint and it's pretty tight so I don't have to worry about it coming apart uh, inside my model when I put the shell in. So the next task, what we're going to do is we're going to solder to a component. And this can be a resistor or a capacitor or anything like that. And we're going to show you kind of an example of all the above. And uh, so first thing we're going to do is, again, we're going to tin the end of our wire. We're going to trim the component lead short. The example here is when you're talking about these resistors, you get these really long leads coming off of the end of the resistor. You don't need to solder to the very end of this. You can cut it short like I did here on this other side. And that way you don't have all that exposed area because any time you have exposed metal inside your model, that's a potential issue for either touching up against, say, the circuit board inside and causing it shorts or other issues. Um, it could be bent inside and then directly cause other issues. Um, so again, we want to make sure we're doing small, clean, professional looking joints. So to start with here, we're going to do this resistor. And I'm going to use the long end intentionally here. So we're going to start off. We've got our resistor lead here. You guys can kind of see the resistor. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take my cutters here and I'm going to cut this lead short so that that way I don't have to, I don't have a whole lot of soldering uh, or wire that needs to be covered up. So now you can see how short that lead is. 
So I'm going to put that in my helping hand here. Now I'm going to take the next wire. So what we're going to do is again, we're going to tin the end. So we're going to use our cutters. Now we have our exposed wire. We're going to twist the end, apply flux. Clean our solder iron, put a little bit of solder on the end, tin the end of the wire. Okay. Now we're going to solder to the connection. So next thing we know, we need to get a piece of heat shrink tubing. So we're going to slide that over the wire here. And again, I'm going to use my tweezers to get my hands out of the way. So hopefully you guys can see this a little better. We're going to apply flux to our joint. Oops, a little too much, but that's okay. Clean our iron, grab our solder. And then we're just going to hold this in parallel. We're going to solder it to the end. And then now we've got our joint. So now we can take our heat shrink tubing and slide it over the connection that we've just made and in this case the heat shrink tubing is a little bit bigger than this eighth watt resistor that i've chosen so we can actually take this and slide it slightly over the the resistor and then we can take our heat source again in this case our soldering iron and we can shrink the tubing over the wire and over the resistor and there you go We've got a nice, clean, small, concise, and precise connection there. The same thing would happen if we're soldering to a uh, resistor lead, I mean a capacitor lead or something like that. Um, again, you can hold the, the capacitor in our helping hand here. And I'm going to grab a wire here that's already got an, a tinned end because we've done that quite a few times. So again, we can do this where we, we in this case, we're going to show a loose wire. So we can actually apply the, the heat shrink tubing after we're done. So we can just again, put a little bit of flux on the joint, grab our soldering iron, get some solder. And in this case, I'm gonna hold it with my hand and just solder the lead of the capacitor right there. Nice and simple. And again, with that work, you get, you know, by doing this process, you get a nice, clean, professional joint. And so you're going to have a lot of years of reliable operation with the better solder joints all the way around. So the next thing is through hole soldering. And again, this is going to be a very similar uh, process to exactly what we've been doing already. So in the, you're going to apply flux to the component, uh, push it through the hole. Um, apply soldering to the iron tip, place the, the soldering tip and iron at the joint, make sure that the complete surface is wetted and you want to make sure that you've got um, a fillet and the fillet is the between the component and the, the surface that you're soldering to. You want to make sure you get a nice even wetting and fillet formed. We're going to take this resistor that we just did and we're going to solder it to this uh, scrap circuit board that we have here. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a little bit of flux, apply it to the joint. We're going to put our component in place. So with our component in place, now we can grab our soldering iron. We'll get some solder on the end. And we can make our joint. just like that. So now when you look at the, the connection here, you can see that my resistor is soldered to this terminal right here. Now, when you're making these joints, again, we're going to cut this component lead short because you don't need a whole lot of extra lead uh, exposed on the raw circuit board here. So you want to make sure that you've got it uh, properly done and a nice short connection. Now, one of the other things we're going to slightly talk about here, and this has come up on rare occasion, but if you get a circuit board here, and in this particular case, this is just a dummy 
uh, circuit board that I took out of a, a older model for scrap. But uh, we're going to say, uh, let's say, for example, I know there's some models out there that have a locomotive to tender wiring kit, um, eight wires between the locomotive and tender, and you may want to solder to those traces or add an extra wire, for example. Well, you can kind of see the different discolorations here in the circuit board, and you can kind of see where the traces lie. So what we're going to do is we're just going to solder to one of those traces uh, inside the circuit board. Now on the decoders themselves, I cannot stress this enough, do not do this. Um, because if you're soldering to these traces, you're probably damaging or soldering in somewhere that you don't want to. Um, so the technique to do this, you want to make sure it's just a dummy PCB or something like that. But what you can do is you can take an X-Acto knife or something similar and just kind of scrape the epoxy or the coating off of that particular trace to expose the bare metal. And we're just going to do this a little bit because again, you don't want to expose a whole lot we're going to make a precise joint. So there we go. Now we have a small little bit and I'll put this up here so we can see the, to the camera. You can see there in the middle of these two uh, solder traces here for these diodes, uh, we have an exposed piece of metal there. So we're going to clean off the, the, the scrap that I just got off of there. Again, we're going to take our flux. We're going to put a little flux on that joint. We're going to take a wire here that I've got already tinned. We're going to put some solder on the iron. And let's put a little bit of solder. You want to make sure that you heat up both sides of that joint, not just the wire. You want to heat up the trace as well to make sure that that iron or that metal wire sticks to it. And there we go. Just like that. So there's a lot, once you learn the techniques of soldering, there's a lot of things that you can use this for, um, especially in the case, like say for example, if you're soldering to speakers, stuff like that, you, you can do some of this uh, when you're doing a little bit of flux, a little bit of solder, quick application and time, and just make sure that your fine tip iron is putting the heat only on the joint that you need. The last thing, let's say we made a mistake or let's say for argument's sake, okay, well we have to remove a decoder um, or we have to, move a wire to someplace else. Let's say we decided to do uh, something different. So in this case, this is where the braid comes into play. And we're going to take our original PCB here and we're going to show you. So if we have to desolder, there's the solder sucker. Again, it's tricky to use with multiple hands because not only do you have to have the iron, you want to be able to pull the component out of the joint and hold the solder sucker so it becomes an exercise in multiple tasking. It is a large tool, so it's harder to hold and uh, uh, harder to manipulate. And as I mentioned, the tip of the iron or the tip of the solder sucker can get disformed or disfigured, especially when you're working with 700 degrees Fahrenheit. So with the braid, it's easy to use. You can apply a little bit of flux, but the braid uses what's called capillary action to draw the hot solder off of the joint and into the braid and the flux will help it flow a little bit better and it removes the solder from the joint. So this resistor that we just soldered to the circuit board, we're gonna take off. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna apply a little bit of flux, if I get my fingers to cooperate, to my joint. And I've got my desoldering braid here. I've got it exposed out quite a bit to make sure that I can get to the work that I need. Clean my soldering iron. And we're just going to apply this heat. And as the flux melts and, and dissolves, you can see that it's drawing the solder out of that joint. And we can do this a few different times to make sure we get all the solder out. And once we're done, we can take this out. And you can see now, hopefully you can, that with all the solder removed, we've got a nice clear hole now that I can put the, the component back in if I need to resolder it again. You can also heat up the joint, remove the wire, and then use the, the braid to clean up the extra solder left behind too. There's different ways. And then once you're done, you just cut off the part that you just soldered to, throw it away, and now you've got a fresh braid to start with for the next time. Well, guys, that's kind of the overall tip, uh, tips that we've got for soldering. Um, we've got a lot of uh, um, 
applications for this, especially when we're doing our installations. Um, I know we did this very quickly, but you've got the techniques now so you can implement this into your uh, decoder installation. Um, and there's a lot of, uh, you know, get some practice, uh, uh, play around. You know, this is just a scrap circuit board that we had laying around, um, but you can use, as I did here, just a dummy uh, circuit board that you took out of a locomotive or, um, you know, an old decoder that you took out that's obsolete or whatever the case is, um, gives you some opportunity to try it out. We've got a lot of guides on our website, including our uh, Soundtracks Guide to Successful Soldering, which I forgot to put on this list, so I apologize. But it, if you go to the manual section and under reference documents, you can see the Soundtracks Guide to Successful Soldering. You can see a list of the tools and techniques that we just described here uh, listed there as well.